Hi, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and our special guest today is Brother Dan Bosman from South Africa. Good to see you. Thank you, Dr. Son. We want to talk about these pictures. These pictures are off the internet, and they reflect some huge worldwide revivals that have been taking place all over the world. It's important to realize that the media is not reporting on these because they don't like Now, let me see if I can show you this picture. It looks to me like millions of people seeing these revivals from all over the world. That's kind of earth-shaking that these revivals are taking place is number one, that's earth-shaking in itself. And the other thing is that they're not being reported, even though they're tremendous importance. What do you think about that? When we had those incredible revivals in South Africa, something like that was never heard of. That they wouldn't report it? And what happened was I was invited to a conservative Episcopal Church after the priest was healed of increasing glycoma. His doctor, who we went to see, actually examined him, and he was amazed. They actually told the congregation, the medical doctor leading the speech, actually, was so excited, and they told the congregation what happened to him. They said, well, if there's anybody who would like to come for prayer, they're most welcome to come. They phoned me and asked me if I'd come over. Well, I was told there'd be a, between 15 and 20 people. And when we got there, we got the shock of our lives. There was over 2,000 people that arrived at this overcrowded Episcopal church. At that stage, I was 25 years old. I had no idea how to preach. In fact, I used to listen to Billy Graham, and Billy Graham would just say, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. So I decided to do the same thing. And all I did was quote scripture. But there's power in the Word of God. Over 2,000 people committed their lives to the Lord in that Episcopal church. Then there was the most amazing miracles. There were people that were healed of all kinds of conditions. And I remember the priest, John Spaker, coming to me and he said, Dan, what are we going to do with all these hearing aids? <laughs> and I said, John, what do you mean? He says, well, when the people were healed, they just left their hearing aids in the pews. The deacons have collected them. Well, all of that got into a secular press. This secular press didn't believe in anything like that. Sure. But because it happened in a conservative Episcopal church, it got into the media and it was on the front pages of the newspapers for years on end. That's great. I'm sure there were some healings in these huge revivals. Absolutely. That's a big part of why thousands of people came to hear these services. But these services were censored from the news. In other words, if 2,000 people did anything, normally there would be a huge reporting on that. Because it's a Christian happening, the media censors it and won't let anyone know what's going on. It was totally different in South Africa. In fact, All the publicity that was given in the secular media every day, if I had to pay for that, Ah. it would have cost millions. And yet it was a secular press that printed it. It created a huge expectancy, and we had thousands of people coming to these meetings. I think it's really important for everyone to understand that the media is very biased, at least in America it is. The media is just as biased in South Africa. It's the same socialist media that you have in America 
is the same socialist media in South Africa. And because of this revival in South Africa that took place in the Episcopal Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Churches, and the Baptist Churches, it was so amazing. God used it to create this huge expectancy amongst people. And because it happened in conservative churches, that's what made it so amazing. It actually averted a communist takeover of South Africa at that time. This is an earth-shaking event, these pictures. There's no words to describe this except to just see that there's thousands and thousands, if not millions of people at these revival meetings all over the world. Here's Africa. Here is more Africa. Here's Australia. Here's Pakistan. I didn't get all the pictures, but there are others in South America, Central America. It's just the idea that there's a huge move of God in the world that they're trying to cover up. What is wonderful, when our backs are against the wall, we know there's no one else to turn to. People turn to God. And when they turn to God, the Lord wonderfully reveals himself through a revelation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I would often hear religious people say, God doesn't heal you because you don't have enough faith. God doesn't want to heal you because you've got some sin in your life. Well, in the meetings we held, most of those people that were prayed for were total skeptics, did not believe at all. And you should have looked at the amazement on their faces when God healed them through his grace and mercy. That shows it was a sovereign act of the Holy Spirit, and it had nothing to do with all our religious ideas. It seems to me that in the Bible, there's some mention that in the last days, there would be a revival. In fact, in the book of Joel, he says, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Now, all flesh means all flesh. It doesn't mean religious people. It means all flesh. When people turn to God, in fact, Jesus told his disciples, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He didn't say it's optional. He said, do it. It's not God that doesn't want to do it. It's us that don't believe his word. All we've got to do is go ahead and do what he said. And the Lord will reveal himself in a mighty way. Well, the fact that these huge revivals are going on all over the world, that makes me more encouraged that there'll be more here in the United States if we just believe what is happening. The media is so opposed to Christianity. In other words, they want to spike these stories. They want to push them under the rug, yet they're very important to all of us today. There's one thing for sure. God is still in control. I think these are tremendous moves of God all over the world. There's really almost nowhere that they aren't having huge revivals. I would like to share a a wonderful experience. I'd gone down to a little place in South Africa called Peter Maritzburg. It's in the Natal Midlands. What is amazing was I started to hold some services in the Episcopal Church and then the Methodist Church, and that's where that farmer came that God is using, where he's drawing over one and a half million people at the prayer meetings in Mm. South Africa. He asked me to pray for his son who had asthma. It was chronic asthma. Prayed for him and his son never had another asthmatic attack. Now, what was amazing, there was a doctor and his wife, Dr. Douglas Simpson, that came to these services. He had retinal detachments of his eye. He had gone down to Cape Town to see Professor Maurice Luntz, 
who tried light beam coagulations to try and stem the retinitis to no avail. Eventually, his wife pleaded with him to attend one of my services. Well, he says, I sat at the back because if I sat there, I could make a hasty retreat if I didn't like what I saw. That night, he realized his need of Jesus Christ as his Savior, and he came forward with hundreds of other people to commit their lives to the Lord. The next day, he was challenged by his atheist friend, Dr. Fenica. And Dr. Fenica said to him, Well, Douglas, what on earth possessed you to attend that meeting? He said, I didn't want to go. I just went because of the insistence of my wife. He said, But there I realized my need. Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I committed my life to him. Dr. Fenica replied, well, do you feel any different? He said, I don't know quite how to describe it, but I can tell you I have this tremendous peace inside of me. And then he said, my daughter has myeloblastic leukemia. Won't you go and ask Dan Bosman if he could pray for my daughter? He said to him, then I'll go again tonight. He came and sat second row from the front because this time he was a believer and he didn't need to sit at the back anymore. And while he was sitting there in the middle of my sermon, the Lord impressed upon me there was somebody who had severe eyesight defect. But if he would stand to his feet, he would find God has healed him. He said, I had no intention of standing to my feet because I didn't want to be a spectacle. But somehow, when I looked again, I was standing on my feet. I could read the quarter sheet. And my son, Bruce, exclaimed, Dad, you've been healed. And he says, I was wild with excitement. He stuck up his hand and he said to me, can I say something? I didn't know who he was. And he said, I'm the medical superintendent of Gray's Hospital, which is one of the biggest provincial hospitals in Peter Maritzburg. And he said, I had this retinal detachment in my eyes. And when my wife insisted that I come, I said to her, Sally, my eyes are a case of real pathology and not just symptoms. I don't believe God can heal my eyes. In spite of him not believing it, God, through the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, healed him anyhow. Then he said, can we all stand and can we pray for Dr. Fenica's daughter, Julie, who has myeloblastic leukemia? There was about 1,200 people there and everybody joined hands. They were from every different denomination. We join hands and we agree together in prayer that God will heal his daughter. He says, it was amazing. I sent Julie Fenicke's blood slides down to Professor Saunders, who is an oncologist in Cape Town, and he phoned me. He said, Douglas, you've sent me the wrong blood slides. Oh, boy. He said, no, I haven't. Those are Julie Fenicke's blood slides. I cannot find an aberrant cell in Julie Fenica's circulation. She is completely healed of myeloblastic leukemia. That caused such a huge stir. Of course, that was in the front pages of the newspapers for days on end. What happened after that, Dr. Simpson was so excited, he went around praying for patients in the hospital. Much to the alarm of the medical director, Dr. Willem Berta. And he said to him, Dr. Simpson, you were employed as a medical officer. You were not employed as a priest. Eventually, Dr. Simpson called me and he said, Dan, is my job on the line? And I said, I don't know. He said, what must I do? I said, do what God tells you to do. One day he received a call from Dr. Willem Berta and he said, Dr. Simpson, you better get over to the emergency room as quick as possible. My wife has just suffered from cardiac arrest. When he got there, she was having an ECG, and he said, 
she flatlined. Dr. Simpson just prayed that God would just touch her and heal her. He says the heart monitor started to flicker. The next thing, there was a perfect heartbeat, 75 beats per minute. God healed Dr. Buerta's wife, and then Dr. Willem Buerta and Dr. Simpson went around in the hospital, both praying for patients. Wow. Created a big stir in the medical world. That was a revival in itself. That's pretty good. I got saved quite a few years ago. I used to tell people, they'd say, oh, doctors don't get saved. And I said, with God, all things are possible. That makes it even more interesting that all these doctors got saved. <laughs> it's amazing. I remember once the media were creating quite a sensation because to create a sensation sells newspapers. Eventually, they were saying, we hear about all these miracles, but what does the doctor say about it? It's amazing. People would rather believe what the doctor says than what God says. But anyway, at one of the meetings I was holding, there was a young girl who had suffered from polio. She was a polio victim. I asked if there was a medical doctor. Eventually, I saw somebody raising a black umbrella because it had drizzled, rained slightly, and this doctor said he would come to the front. The media had got hold of him, and his name is Dr. Willem Gachet. So the media got hold of him, and they said, Dr. Gachet, do you really believe all of this? He says, of course I don't believe it. So they said to him, well, then why are you going up to the front? He says, because I want to prove this is a lot of nonsense. Anyway, he came to the front. I asked him to look at the girl that was a polio victim. And he said, I can see her left knee is much higher than the right knee. So I only conclude that the problem must have been in a femur. I said to him, do you believe that God can perform a miracle for her? His words to me was, if that happens, that would be a supernatural miracle. As we prayed, God performed this miracle, and you could absolutely see the knee coming in line with the other knee. It was amazing. This doctor was flabbergasted. They asked him, they said, I said to him, and what do you think of this? He says, I don't need to see a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with my eyesight, so I can only conclude this must be the work of God. The next day, he went and bought himself a Bible. He sat in his surgery, he opened the Bible, and he said, Now, God, this is a pretty big book. I don't even know where to begin to read, because he had never read a Bible before. He said, Show me, in your words, something that I can share with my colleagues. He opened it to the place where Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. It so turned out that this doctor and myself eventually went round, and we went and ministered to a lot of his patients, and God healed them. That again was a wonderful manifestation of God's grace and his love. We've got all of these pictures here of huge revivals all over the world. We will be glad to send these to anybody that wants them. So if you call in right now, it's area code 502-895-5025. Just leave your name, address, and phone number, and we will send these pictures to you that prove that there are huge revivals going on all over the world that the media doesn't want you to know about. Oh, just give us a call right now. It's area code 502-895-5025, and we'll send you a copy. I think it's about 20 pages if you get them all together. They're all over the world. A real eye-opener because no one believes that these things are happening until they see these pictures, and then it's apparent that they are happening. You really need to give us a call and see this information, these pictures, 
895-5025, and we'll get those right out to you. If you call right now, there may be an answering machine, but you can still leave your name, address, and phone number, and we'll get these out to you because this is amazing. I have a video of a miracle, an absolute miracle, of this one very much shortened limb actually growing out, and that took place in India, and I've got it on my phone, so I can make that video available. It's amazing to watch the miracle taking place before your very eyes. It's not something that happened later. It's happened, you can watch it as it's actually happening. Brother Dan, we appreciate you giving us all this information. Just repeat that phone number once more, area code 502-895-5025, and we'll get that out to you. We're about out of time. This is a real eye-opener to see these huge revivals going on all over the world, and the media doesn't even report on it. I was the other night over at Northeast Baptist Church. My attorney had asked me if I would like to come and share with them at the church, and there was a young lady who had walked on a crutch for over a year because she had something wrong with her knee. As I prayed for her, she was so excited. She threw the crutch down. She never used that crutch again. When she got to the church the next day, the next morning, everybody was surprised to see her walk in there without the crutch. The attorney's wife is a medical doctor, and I could see she was quite hesitant. She didn't really participate, but her son had a fracture of the femur. And as we prayed for her, this young boy, I I guess he's around about 12 or maybe 13 years old, the Lord touched his hip in such a wonderful way. When he walked away there, he walked without the limp. That got the attention of his mother, who is the doctor, and she asked me to pray for one of her colleagues that had cancer. We're about out of time. God bless you, and tune in again next week for the rest of the news. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. You ready to go? And Dr. Simon, try to remember no ums and uhs. Hi, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and we have our special guest today right here in the studio with us, Cindy Marlowe, who is an outstanding person. He keeps up with the votes in Frankfurt, especially on marijuana. And we want to talk about marijuana. Let's see now. Is Brother Lee Watts with us? Yes, I am. Oh, praise the Lord. It sure is good to hear your voice. We've been reading your brochure over and over again. Let me show this brochure. This is the brochure that Brother Watts has written. Here's the back. Brother Watts, how does it look in Frankfurt for passing or not passing marijuana bills. This bill has passed the House committee earlier this year, but with the legislative session being over, they technically have one day left on the 28th. They come in, but that is insufficient time to pass that measure this year. So it's not going to happen this year, but the trouble is the group that is pushing it is getting a lot of people on their side, and they will be back again next year. So we need to start pushing back I've talked with you before, read your brochure on marijuana, medical marijuana. I thought that was very good. (laughs) Then, lo and behold, the Hillsdale paper that comes out, I guess, once a month. Imprimis. Imprimis. Came out, and their whole volume, that whole paper was about marijuana. It really was an eye-opener. It confirmed everything that you had in your brochure came from a slightly different point of view. And I think it's important that 
all of these things get confirmed by more than one source, if possible. If anybody would like to see the brochure or the entire documentary that I made on this, they can just visit the website, which is GodandCountryMinistry.com, and you'll okay. see right there on the front page is the video version of the pamphlet. And we have sources from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the American Cancer Society, the American Heart Association, and many, many others. We probably have 30 different sources, and they all come out with the same thing, is that this stuff is not good as a medicine. I did a search on Google. There was one article that said that it's really not been proven to be effective as a medicine. Is that your understanding? Yes, and again, I get that from the different medical sources that we cite there. Every medicine, even as simple as baby aspirin, all comes with some kind of a side effect. And this stuff comes with a terrible amount of side effects for the different medical organizations have reviewed it, and it's not like the jury is still out on this. The jury is in, and they're like, we have reviewed it, and the side effects far outweigh. Abby Johnson is in the other room. Here. Our first order of business is to present Planned Parenthood's Employee of the Year Award. Abby Johnson. This is Abby. She's our newest volunteer escort. Abby, this is Cheryl Alessandro. I'd be the youngest director in Planned Parenthood history. You'll actually be in charge of the abortions at your clinic. I have a chance to make a real difference. No matter what you do for the rest of your life, you're still going to be a baby killer. The only thing that's changed is you, Abby. Can you even hear yourself talk right now about these procedures? These are little babies. I'm not going to apologize for doing a job that helps women in crisis. There's still a part of me that isn't sure. I know. But the one thing that all experts agree on is that at this stage, the fetus can't feel anything. Sorry to bother you, but they need an extra person in the back room. Are you free? I saw it. It was like it was twisting and fighting for its life. We commend the souls of these hundreds of children. And Lord, we pray to end abortion. I really appreciate what you've done for us. I'll not forget it. 22,000 abortions. How do I even comprehend that? Rough day at the office. You can say that. You're making a mess. <laughs> what are you doing? It's your dad and me. You are our baby from the moment of conception. We are paying you to be a perfect instrument of corporate policy. We are an abortion provider. I can't be a part of this anymore. Everything that they told us is a lie. Don't underestimate the repercussions of this. You gotta be careful. Rhonda, please don't do this! Rhonda! Let me tell you what's gonna happen if you walk through that door. Congratulations, you've made an enemy of one of the most powerful organizations on the planet.